So I'm gonna focus on just magic and buy what you love. There's gonna be a lot of magic product and it all looks pretty Dominator remastered. The all is one, the new Phyrexia set which is, you know, it's always good to see uh, Ellis Norm and Shred Shredder, the, the whatever, the Whispering one. Or what. <laughs> it's always good to see the same characters back again. I think like Cough is back again. Uh, some familiar faces. And obviously, Domino Remaster is just a reprinted set. Now, I believe that 2023, and I have to preface this by saying, will be a very, very terrible year for most Americans in in terms of finance. I work, I own a business, it's a small business, and we do marketing, so that means we have a lot of clients in many different sectors. I can tell you that the majority of sectors, especially the ones I deal with technology, like Meta, like, uh, which is Facebook and Instagram, like Snapchat, which is being obliterated, all these tech companies, Uber, Lyft, they're all bleeding money as we speak. Uh, Twitter, for instance, is just, on the edge of bankruptcy, almost. Um, Google, Alphabet, YouTube, which owns is owned by Google. None of these companies are making ad revenue, and that's my business. But if people are not advertising, it's because they are downgrading. So advertising is the first thing to go, and that's what you know. I'm kind of the canary in a coal mine, and we're coughing, 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 and then we died. <laughs> And uh, after advertising is gone and you're still j digging in a coal mine and the canary's dead, well, there's only one person left to die. That would be you, the employees. And there will be massive layoffs. Uh, my theory about this was during COVID-19 when the government shut everything down, um, that was the best time for Americans in terms of financial money. They got. There was no, uh, they didn't have to pay rent because they couldn't be evicted. Um, you got unemployment checks, sometimes more money than you actually make at your job. Uh, there were a lot of PPP, if you owned a business, there was massive PPP loans that you could take for any amount of money and there was no regulation or checks or and they were all forgiven. Student loans, you still haven't paid any student loans since uh, the beginning of COVID because payments, uh, repayments for the federal loans. I'm not talking about private loans, I'm talking about federal loans. Uh, that was pushed back I, I, until December. And some of it may be forgiven. We'll see what the courts decide. But again, let's not get too political. What my point is, we, got, we, we all got free uh, COVID shot free. Imagine pharmaceutical companies, one of the greediest industries in the US giving us free COVID shots, right? It's like when you can treat a disease and cure it, why not just, you know, booster seven, eight, nine, ten? 10? Remember all the boosters that we were supposed to get for free? Free, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, I, I'm here to tell you, we live in America, nothing is free. The taxpayers eventually pay for it. Uh, the government uh, was gonna shut down. Today, I read an article about the government shutting down and they need 1.7 billion dollars, no, 1.7 trillion with a T dollars. So, I mean, that's not a good sign. <laughs> you know, the government always needs trillions of dollars for whatever it's doing. And that's, it comes from one place, it comes from taxpayers, guys. The government doesn't actually do anything that produces value. They just collect money from taxpayers and then spreads it out to things that they, it, it wants to spend money on. And then lobbyists tell them where the money goes. Anyway, I have a very, very, you know, I, I don't think, now I've been very clear about this on my channel. Um, politics aside, I think less government is better government. And I think government spends a lot of money on dumb stuff. And the more money you give it, the more dumb stuff it's gonna do. So <laughs> the, the solution, in my opinion, is just to have less politicians, less government. You know, obviously, you you can have you need some government to run the police and to do you know to do society, if you will. But I think today it's out of control. Uh, that there's too many politicians. There's too much uh, pork, if you call it, in bills, right? And you know, five trillion dollars later, this is where we got. So anyway, 2022. Well, I got into the whole blah blah blah. 
politics thing, which was a trap. I knew it was a trap when I started talking about it. But buy for Magic the Gathering, I'm only going to buy not from a store purchase. I'm not going to buy any store purchases. I'm going to close my buy list for all collections unless it's actually a collection I want to buy personally. I will no longer buy no more dual lands or power nine because I already have so many of them. I already have a place at plus of power nine. I already have 400 dual lands, probably more. I've got to count them. And it doesn't make sense for me to get any more. Like it really doesn't make sense. It's not an asset that I believe will do well. And it is not a fun asset to collect anymore because I find Fire Emblem Heroes and Inuyasha just far more rare and, e and fun to collect. Um, and you might be like, oh, dual lands are rare. They're reserved. No, I believe the reserve list will be gone in another two to three years. Um, the path they currently on um, indicates that they will reprint everything to the ground until magic is has no value. So I'm going to buy these sets. I'm going to do the chaser for the waifu, the empress. Uh, that was a beautiful chase for waifu. It was really fun. You guys are probably, it's probably going to be month four before you guys see me pull the card. I chased the Elspeth, uh, which turned out not to be very expensive, but it was still hard to chase her down uh, in terms of pulling the card. And I had a fun time, you know, so if I'm having fun with magic, it's not because I'm opening a thousand booster packs, it's because I'm chasing a, a waifu card or a card I really want. And that's fun when you open it, just like Pokemon. I'm not going to treat magic any differently then I treat Pokemon. In Pokemon, you guys know how it goes. I want the Moobreon, I open the packs, I open packs, I try to get the Moobreon or the Espeon VMAX, and sometimes you can pull it and sometimes you can't. And that's the same with Magic, I feel. Uh, but as a, I, I told my distributor, uh, I was given the option, as was everybody in my network, to drop Magic the Gathering entirely, but in terms, I, we had to replace it with I, we had choices to replace it with stuff. I replaced it with sports cards because I still think sports cards are pretty interesting as a speculation. And honestly, you know, it's not, it's, you know, I enjoy sports a lot. And, you know, pulling a Brevin autograph from the Houston Texans, that was kind of fun. So I decided to do sports cards, 10, 10 to 15% sports cards, Funkos, and just everything, but that's not magic. Uh, so I, from buy listing, I used to buy list everybody's collections at buy list plus five or 10%, or at the very least, I would match your buy list, which indicates that I'm not actually interested in your collection. But nonetheless, that's what I did. And I honored that. And, you know, sometimes I split shipping with you. And so it's a good deal. I'm only going to buy collections that I personally want to have in Magic. So if it's a collection of just standard and modern stuff, even at buy list, I won't take it. In the past, I took every collection that came my way and I was very grateful for at the time to take them because it was a good price at the time. Today, nope. I'm only gonna buy like really high-end magic cards that are not power nine. I'm talking about foil magic cards. I'm talking about the Liliana Planeswalker Japanese art talking about the neon ink cards. Uh, I like those. I personally think that they're pretty cool ideas. Uh, maybe it's not for everybody, but it is for me. Like the waifu cards and jumpstart, I think it's a great idea. I will be collecting those for sure. So that's where I am. I think there will be a financial crisis. Everyone in their grandmother and YouTube believes it. I believe it as well. The numbers indicate that we are heading towards a apocalyptical financial event which makes sense. You can't just print $5 trillion, then $1.7 more trillion dollars and not expect you know people to lose jobs. I mean, at the end of the day, um, it, it's very simple. Like if we print all this money, we have to do goods and services to justify the money printing. If we don't, if, we, if there's no more good, if we're not producing or we're not productive, which I don't believe, I believe the average American is less productive today, than they were when before COVID-19 because they had, you know, I, I'm not the only one who believes, Elon Musk believes it as well. That's why he fired all the Twitter employees. I believe there is a whole bunch of employees who are lazy and they're getting paid a lot of money and eventually they all lose their jobs. 
You don't believe me? Look at Meta, look at Amazon. Amazon didn't fire the delivery drivers, guys. That 11,000 workers, they were for Amazon Alexa, they were tech, tech workers. I believe AI will eventually replace a lot of people's jobs. You know, truck drivers get paid a lot of money, but AI could take out the whole industry overnight. Same with Uber, Lyft, you know, Lyft, Uber Eats and all these companies, they're not doing well right now. And at the end of the day, it's very simple and no one has money. <laughs> There's no money left. There's no money left because everything costs more money. So for the same service that you would, let's say you build your fence. Uh, lumber prices have gone down from the all time highs, of course, but it would still cost a lot. Good luck finding someone reliable, responsible and fast working that build you a fence today for any amount of money. Good luck. <laughs> Hi guys.